The big question is, what is going to happen to your Social Security check? Well, there is a big debate in Congress right now about your Social Security check, which is really important to see as a new amendment was just proposed. So for people who say, my God, Social Security is running out of money, it's running out of money, the only solution is drastic cuts. It's completely false. I'm going to play the full video clip of what is going on in Congress, a real-time argument between Democrat and Republican, and how they are going to resolve this. You're going to see uh, the talking between the two. You're not going to want to miss this, between a Democrat and a Republican in real time. I'm going to show you that video clip. Also, take a look at this right here. House GOP unveils budget with trillions in cuts to Medicaid, food benefits, and more. And just in case you're wondering, that more part is Social Security as what was said here is House Budget Committee Republicans' new resolution also calls, calls for the establishment of a bipartisan debt commission to examine and propose changes to the drivers of U.S. debt, such as Social Security and Medicare. So is Social Security going to be in trouble are there going to be changes to your social security check? That's really what matters most. I'm gonna go over the article, share with you the video clip, and if you're on social security or receiving a social security check of any type, you're definitely gonna to wanna to watch this entire video as I have a lot of important updates to share with you, and I'll give you some other important updates as well. Before I dive into the main content, if you appreciate these social security updates, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more social security updates regarding uh, uh, increases, decreases, proposals, bills. Also, this video is sponsored by my company, Ysense. If you or anyone you know is trying to fix your credit, then I have a link down in the description below. Book a free appointment with me and I can point you in the right direction of what to do about fixing your credit. All right, let's get into uh, this right here. House GOP unveils budget with trillions in cuts to Medicaid, food benefits, and more. What a bold title, trillions in cuts. So is that true? Well, I'm gonna share with you in a moment a video clip of the Democrat saying that there are going to be cuts to Social Security, and then a Republican uh, giving a rebuttal of how that is not true, both giving facts and statements. So you're not gonna to wanna to miss that, but first, who is making these claims? Well, the new proposal underscores the Republican Party's thirst for cruel budget cuts, said Democrat Brendan Boyle. So in a moment, you're going to see Brendan Boyle trying to put a an amendment, a new amendment to try to help Social Security. So you're not going to want to miss that. Uh, so yeah, basically this article talking about Brendan Boyle, uh, t how he wants to change the Republican budget that was just proposed and wants to add amendments to it, more specifically to protect Social Security. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to share with you this video clip. First up is Brendan Boyle, representative from Pennsylvania, a Democrat. And then right after he speaks, you're going to hear from a Republican giving a rebuttal about how the those statements are not true about Social Security being cut. You're not going to want to miss this. Take a look at what's going on in Congress. So on the, what was uh, Amendment 14, but now recognized as Amendment 2, um, look, you, you actually heard some bipartisan agreement uh, this morning uh, a few times, one of which was um, while we completely reject a cuts-only approach, we recognize that our growing national debt is an issue. Second point of agreement is we all recognize the reality that Congressional Budget Office and, and uh, the folks who administer the so Social Security Trust Fund have both verified that at some point in approximately a decade from now, uh, CBO I think says 2023, the Social Security trustees say 2034, nonetheless about 10 years from now, uh, the trust fund does become insolvent. This is a problem for all of us. Uh, this amendment, works to solve that problem. Um, this is from a piece of legislation that I have authored with uh, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse, who is the chair of the Senate Budget Committee. This would ensure enough revenue is put into the Social Security Trust Fund to secure it through at least the year 2100. And those aren't my figures. The Joint Committee on Taxation has verified that by simply uh, taking away the cap on those who make more than $400,000 a year, 
that will put in enough money into the Social Security Trust Fund that secures it for the rest of this century. So for people who say, my God, Social Security is running out of money, it's running out of money, the only solution is drastic cuts. It's completely false. And there's precedent for this. There was a time when Medicare trust fund uh, was going out of money. The 1.45% was up to a certain cap. What led to that cap's removal was a previous um, fiscal challenge that the program faced. Here in this amendment, this amendment does not remove the cap entirely. It keeps the cap, uh, but simply for those who are making more than $400,000 a year, it again would reimpose uh, the FICA tax. It also closes tax loopholes that allow some of the richest Americans from paying anything in Social Security taxes at all. You know, there are more than 67 million Americans who rely on Social Security benefits. It is an earned benefit. Whenever someone uses the word entitlement, I'm always quick to point out people paid into that program. My own father is one of those 67 million Americans. He worked for 50 years at hard blue collar jobs, paying into Social Security. Now in retirement, the bulk of his retirement savings are in the earned benefit of Social Security. He in many ways is very representative of the average hardworking American. We have a solemn moral obligation to ensure that Social Security Trust Fund does not expire 10 years from now. Vote for this amendment. It ensures that it will be there for generations to come. I yield back. I thank the gentleman from Pennsylvania, uh, Ranking Member Boyle, and now ask if there are any claims from other members in opposition to this amendment. I'd like to uh, yield now five minutes in recognition of the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Drew Ferguson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I, I want to look, you know, make a couple of comments here. Again, when we look at this budget, it does not, it does not touch, touch benefits and Social Security, um, and we all recognize, we all recognize how important this program is, and it's important that we protect our seniors. If you look at where insolvency is, it keeps moving up. The date gets closer and closer. It's now within the 10-year window. If you, look at, if you look at what happens in nine years, the shortfall will be approximately $616 billion in year one, in year one. This amendment, if you look at it, talking about removing the, the cap <clears throat> on $400,000 would add approximately $86 billion over the 10-year window. It is simply not enough to cover the, to the major shortfall, and we're doing it in a way where we haven't analyzed what that would do to the overall economy in terms of productivity and job creation by, con by, by continuing to raise taxes. We need to be a little bit more intellectually honest, and we need to do this in a bipartisan way. My colleagues on the other side of the aisle, um, and my dear friend from, um, from Connecticut, Mr. Larson, keeps talking about wanting to expand Social Security. I think our first priority should be able to, should be to protect <coughs> Social Security for the, for the folks that have already earned and, and have paid into it. And also, I think we need to be, I think we need to be honest about what this program is. When <clears throat> the, the ranking member talked about um, his dad paying into the system, just as my parents have as well, um, it, they made payments into the system to help support other retirees. And what, what we're running into is that we don't have enough workers right now paying into the system for the current number of retirees, and that, and that math is only getting worse. And I'd like to add one other thing. If we simply do this by saying we're gonna, we're gonna raise taxes, we are, we, are, we are missing the boat on something that's happening <clears throat> in our economy that's, tr that's pretty dramatic, and that is the advent of artificial intelligence and the impact that it could have on the workforce. In every single one of the jobs that potentially could be eliminated by, by AI, 
is, is another hit to the solvency of both Social Security and Medicare. So I simply think that just raising taxes will have a, will have a negative impact on the economy, and I think that we need, and it's going to create fewer workers. We've seen this time and time again. As taxes go up, productivity goes down. We see, we see closures. We, we see... We see way too many pressures on business and our job creators can't continue to add people to their payrolls, which is actually under the current funding formula, what we need to extend solvency more than anything else. If we don't, if we don't look at this in a holistic fashion and simply say, let's just, let's just make the wealthiest Americans carry more of the burden, because currently about 1% of the population pays about 40% of the taxes. At some point, you break that you, you break those folks in the economy and the economy crashes. We need to be looking at this in a holistic way, in a way that's intellectually honest, and I would urge a no vote on this. And with that, Ms. Mr. Chairman, if I could, um, unanimous request, unanimous consent to um, put, into, put into the uh, record the House Budget Committee um, script um, related to the annual report from the Board of Trustees and the um, their, their, their annual report. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Um, with the remaining time, let me make a couple comments on this. Um, it is critical to our seniors, not just the seniors of today, but of tomorrow. We need to make this thing solvent, give seniors peace of mind, and we need to make it sustainable for the future. A couple things. My Democrat colleagues could have addressed this and the Medicare shortfall when they had run of the show majority in the in the House and the Senate and the presidency, they didn't do it. Now, I'm not blaming my ranking member or any of my colleagues here, but they didn't do it. And you know what? Republicans didn't do it when we had the run of the show. How about we agree we just have to get in a room, hash through the pay-fors, hash through the programmatic reforms, and, and not oversimplify it, but come to a consensus and save that important program that we all know is an earned benefit, as you mentioned, and is uh, critical to, to our seniors. So with that, I uh, yield the remaining one minute to my, my colleague from Pennsylvania. Yeah, so first, uh, as the chairman know, and I thank him, uh, I um, am always willing to work on the other side of the aisle, and as evidenced by how well he and I work together. The good news is right in front of us, there is an amendment that saves Social Security. We can do this now and start the process. My amendment ensures 100% of benefits will be protected for current and future retirees. And to my good friend from Georgia, to his comments about intellectual honesty, I, I do want to bring up, in case he wasn't uh, aware, the figures I cited earlier about providing enough revenue through this amendment through the year 2100 was verified by the Joint Committee on Taxation. So um, it, it is simply not the case that we also need benefit cuts. And I also say, the chairman will indulge me, I, I know there are, I haven't heard it from anyone uh, today, but out um, in the presidential debate, I heard one Republican uh, member, Nikki Haley, make a passionate case for why she wanted to raise the retirement age. She thought it was too low at 65. The full retirement age for Social Security hasn't been 65 for decades. It has already been raised. It is 66 and a half, and uh, effective in 2027 and beyond, it'll be 67. So uh, those who are looking to raise the retirement age um, really should, should actually learn more about what this program currently looks like today. With that, I yield back. I think the uh, gentleman from Pennsylvania, the question is now agreeing to the amendment offered by Mr. Boyle. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those in opposition say no. No. What's the opinion of the chair? The noes have it. And as we agreed to, we'll postpone that recorded vote. Ask, uh, and just for the record, ask for a recorded vote. Absolutely. Um, let's move on now to... As you heard there in real time, Democrat versus Republican talking about the cuts to Social Security or no cuts to Social Security. What are your thoughts on that? Are you confident in Congress's competence? Let me know your thoughts on all that down in the comments below. And that is all the news that I have for you today to hopefully brighten your day a bit. Here's my daughter Bella's tip of the day. Hi guys, so my name is Bella. This is the tip of the day. Do this, if you make a mistake, 
then it's okay. You learn from your mistake, it makes you a better person. So it's okay. It's okay. We, we still love you. We like you a lot. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate your support. If you want to see the latest in terms of COLA updates, social security increase proposals, you're going to want to click this video right up here as I'll go over the latest news in that video. So click that video right now and I'll see you in that video. Take care. Be safe. Thank you for watching.